been professional politicians since they left those universities. Now, I'm an activist, not a politician. I don't want to be an MP. I want to see more women MPs. I want to see more black MPs. And above all, I want to see more working class MPs. Now, I don't know how many of you are members of the Labour Party. Could you please put your hand up if you're a member of the Labour Party? Well, that's quite a lot. I'm very pleased to see it. But I'd like the people who didn't put their hands up to join the Labour Party now as well. We need you. And like all members of the Labour Party, you get to choose your candidates to stand for office. And I hope that next time you come to choose a candidate for Westminster around here, that you choose a good local working class candidate. You don't need to import a candidate from across the Tamar. You need someone who understands the people of Cornwall and how they have gained, so many of them have gained nothing from turning docks and boatyards into yachting marinas from turning tin mines and clay pits that used to employ thousands of people into museums Yay! and into gardens. Not that I'm against museums or gardens, by the way. Who didn't gain much or anything at all from selling houses that used to house people who fished for a living and replaced them with people who bought them as second homes. and community activists like the people we've seen on this platform today. And when it comes to a leader, the sort of leader I want is someone else like them who is normal. And I'm not talking about a wife and three kids normal. I'm talking about someone who has not spent his life seeking personal power. Who has not sold out to the rich and famous and sought to hobnob with them, who has not spent most of his working life seeking to become leader. I want to see as leader someone who had the leadership thrust upon him by hundreds of thousands of people around the country like you last Yay! summer. Someone you know you can trust to do what he says he's going to do. Now, Philip Collins says the campaigning movements and electoral victories are different. Apparently, populist movements, like us, are deep but narrow. And an election victory requires a party to win over people who are not our natural supporters. Now, I want to say one or two things about electability. Last summer, our side, the people here, got a quarter of a million votes, but are apparently deep but narrow. His side got four and a half percent of the votes. That's less than 19,000. Apparently that side is broader, and so it's bound to be shallow. Well, let me say, first of all, I agree about the shallow. Um, the way, what it shows is that the way he sees the political spectrum is that he sees us about that wide, okay? Uh, admittedly, about uh, a quarter of a million deep. He sees his side as being this wide. That's 19,000 wide, but only one deep. That is a very funny way to look at the political spectrum. Now, finally on the point about winning over people who are not our natural supporter. supporters. New Labour, throughout its time, targeted Tories, but they lost our core voters. Between 1997 and 2010, they lost the votes of five million working class people. Even by 2005, the last time Tony Blair won an election, we ended up with 35% of the, of, the, of the voters. Now that is less than we had in 1979 when we lost to Mrs Thatcher, 
that is less than we had in 1970 when we lost to Ted Heath. And it's even less than we had in 1931 when we lost to Ramsay MacDonald and his Tory friends. That is not a great achievement, actually, and we will not win unless we achieve the return of our natural supporters, our working class voters. And Jeremy Corbyn is the only leader who can achieve that. We need the Labour Party to be a mass party. We're already a half a million strong. If they hadn't have done their best to keep people out of the Labour Party in this election, we would have been up to three quarters of a million. And we can be a million and that's where we intend to be. We need to be rooted in every community and every workplace, fighting for the next elector, win the next election. That's the way we can win. Now before I go, I've got some practical tasks. But there's one thing I want to do just before, one last thing I want to do before that. We've talked about, other people have talked about the resilience of Jeremy Corbyn. Can I also talk about the resilience of some of our other MPs? Some of the younger MPs who were only elected to Parliament a year ago, who have suddenly been thrust into the shadow cabinet with not just hostility from the people on the benches in front of, them, in front of them, but a fair bit of hostility from the benches behind them. The young MPs, and also some older MPs who maybe never sought a place on the front bench. So I want to hear it, please, for some of those MPs. I want to hear it for Cat Smith. campaign. Please volunteer. Go to our website, jeremyforlabour.com forward slash volunteering and volunteer to help with our campaign. We particularly need you to help with our phone banks. We've got a phone app. Any of you can download it to your phone or your local or your computer and you can do it from home or better still, get friends from nearby to help you do it from home. Okay? You do that by going onto our website to a page called Jeremy Call-In. You can find it on the website, look for the tab saying Get Involved, and then the canvassing app, and do that. And then finally, I need to ask for something very important that we need in this campaign, and that is your money. Now, we haven't got any buckets, we do things in a new way now. I hope you've all got mobile phones. Who's got a mobile phone? Can you hold it up? If you've got a mobile phone. Okay, this is how you can donate us some money. I've, what you, and before I tell you that, I've got to read out some words. They're very important. Donating money will cost you five or ten pounds, depending on which option you go for, I'll tell you in a second. It will be added to your bill or deducted from your balance. You have to be 18 over. I uh, have to be 18 or over. I'm sorry about that. If you're under 18, you can join the party for a pound and you can get involved in developing young labour. Let's do that if you're under 18. But if you're over 18, you can. And also, if it's not your phone, I'm afraid you need permission from the person whose phone it is. Now, what I need you to do is to text. This number, can you type it into your phone now? 68899. 68899. And I want you to send to that text that number either the word Jeremy 5, which would donate five pounds, or Jeremy 10. It's your choice. But please, we need your money. So just to remind you once again, 68899. Text Jeremy 5 or Jeremy 10. Thank you for your support, comrades. And let's hear it for the new politics. Yes, we can.
Okay, we've had quite a few speakers. Do you want one more? Yeah. One more speaker, do you think? Yeah. Who do we want? Yeah. Hey. Yeah. I think we might be able to sort that out. So, just to um, say one thing first, right? There were a few people who didn't put their hands up uh, as Labour Party members. There's a gazebo over there, Labour Party on it. It's got membership forms there. You can sign up right here and now. So come on, but don't only join, get involved with your local party. Get involved with your branch, change the politics, change what we do, select your candidates. Now, I'm going to introduce you to, uh, now to Jeremy Corbyn, the leader of the Labour Party. for that fantastic reception and thanks to all the other speakers for what they've just said and uh, John Lansman asked you to donate five or ten pounds to the campaign if you can and we're very grateful if you do because I tell you this this campaign has uh, not received any offers of corporate money so we haven't had to go through the role of um, refusing any offers of corporate donations to our campaign because none have been made to us. And the donations we've had, we're very, very grateful to them. They've either come from trade unions or from people sending small amounts of money. I am much happier with a large number of small donations of people all over the country who want to be part of a movement of hope, of determination and of optimism of what we can all achieve together. And I want to say a big thank you to all of you for being here today and all those volunteers that have organised this event because these things don't happen by accident. Politics changes when people come together. Politics changes when people come together in a spirit of determination to ensure something better. All those volunteers that came together to organise today's event, give them a big round of applause and say thank you very much for everything you've done. And thank you to those unions that are here today. I've seen an RMT banner out there. I'm very pleased to see the Unite tent over there because our party and our unions are working together. We were founded by trade unions. Working class communities wanting a political voice is what brought the Labour Party into being in the first place. Cornwall was, of course, the very heart of the Industrial Revolution in Britain. The steam engine came here, the Trevevic's invention, the development of the mines and so much other technology came from this county. This very place is a symbol of the mining industry that once was and the technology that went with it. And whilst we always remember the great engineers, Trevithick, Brunel and so many others, think for a moment of those that worked in those mines, those that built those railways, and those that died in the process of doing it. And it was the Industrial Revolution that founded the trade unions in many ways and founded the Labour Party with it. So this rally today is symbolic of many things. It's symbolic because Cornwall is a very different and very special place. But it's symbolic because we are campaigning in this leadership election, as in any other election, in every single part of the United Kingdom. And I tell you, since we launched our campaign on the 21st of July, we've already held rallies in Salford, Durham, York, Hull, Leeds, Liverpool, Brighton, Cardiff, Merthyr Tidfil, Swansea, here to 
today and then we're off to Bristol, then we're off to Liverpool again and we're off to Manchester, we're off to the North East, we're off to Scotland, we're off to Birmingham, we are off to every single part of this country to give that message that we can and will do politics very differently within our society. Because it's a message of how we want to achieve things. Now, last year, we lost a general election. We were devastated by that defeat. I was absolutely devastated by it because I wanted to be in Parliament with a Labour majority to build houses, to give better employment protection, to invest rather than destroy industries in this country. I wanted to be there to do that. I'm proud to be in Parliament, but obviously we're not in a majority. We all understand that. But then you think back and analyse what happened. And whilst there were many, many very, very good things in the manifesto on which we fought the 2015 election, the fundamental problem was that we hadn't challenged the idea that you deal with a financial crisis brought about by the greed irresponsibility of the banking community by cutting public services, freezing wages and damaging the life chances of a whole generation of young people. We hadn't crossed that Rubicon of saying we were going to do things very, very differently. And so, last year we had the leadership election and it was an amazing experience. As you all know, it was very easy for the nomination to be obtained to go on the ballot paper, and it was obtained with plenty of time to spare, in fact, one minute, 50 seconds, until such time as uh, it would have been too late. And that campaign brought a lot of people together. Brought them together, not around personal personalities or personal issues, brought them together on the kind of Labour Party they wanted, on the kind of politics they wanted, the kind of inclusivity we wanted, and the way in which we understand and respect each other, and we respect each other's point of view and recognise that every single one of us has ideas, has imagination that should be part of our policy making and part of our growth as a movement. So we bring people with us rather than offer them something we will feed down from high above just before the next general election. It's a very different way of doing politics. And I have to say, some of the national media are finding it quite hard to understand. <laughs> But we're helping them. And I have to say, I'm very grateful to one newspaper, which by an analysis done by the uh, uh, LSE and other universities, have done lots of academic studies and media coverage of the Labour Party over the past year, has um, done... 86% of its stories have been downright hostile to the Labour Party. 16% have been adjudged to be broadly informative or neutral. So far, there's been not one positive thing whatsoever in that newspaper. But today it's changed. There is a positive article in that paper. Mainly because I wrote it and sent it to them. So we are reaching out. But for all the media attacks and disinterest, two things have happened. One is social media is a way of reaching a whole different spectrum of people. And uh, I'll give you an example of how powerful this can be. When we stood up in Parliament to criticise the government's programme, the programme they're now trying to push through in Parliament, we got two million people following it and watching it live on Facebook, as we do for pretty well all of our rallies and all of our events. It's not the be-all and end-all of everything, but it is a way of reaching out. And for those who are sceptical of... Uh, the success of the party over the past year, I simply give them two figures. At the time of the 2015 general election, Labour Party membership was just around 200,000. A good figure, yes, but not enough. Today, Labour Party membership is 540,000. 
that in just over a year it's gone up to that figure with the largest socialist party across the whole continent. And when I attend meetings of the Party of European Socialists, we sit around a big table and discuss lots of things, and at the end they all turn to me and said, what is it in Britain that people are joining the Labour Party in such numbers? And I say, yes. it's because yes. people want to come together to propose an alternative economic, social, community and cultural strategy for their lives and their community and their country. And so we are having a leadership election, of course, and uh, that this leadership election gives us the chance to reach out to even more people and also reach out to those communities that have been left behind in free market Tory Britain, where unemployment is rife, where poverty wages are rife, where industries have disappeared, where financial services are the only thing on option. We've, we have to reach out to all of those communities. Nowhere more so than in the southwest of England and particularly in Devon and Cornwall. The lowest wages are in Devon and Cornwall across the whole of the UK. The need for infrastructure and other investment is nowhere greater than in Devon and Cornwall, as well as, of course, in the northeast and to some extent in some parts of the northwest of England. There is a grotesque imbalance in the way in which the economy is run in our society and the wage levels that are with it. If you take 100 as the median for the whole country in contribution to gross product, Cornwall comes out at 62. In other words, this county is underinvested in, this county has the lowest wages, this county has far too many insecure jobs on zero hours contracts and all the insecurity that goes with that. It can and should be done very, very differently indeed. It has to be done. Cornwall had European Union Objective 1 status, and it still does. It has that because of the levels of poverty, because of the levels of underinvestment that exist across this county. And so what we're proposing will make a very, very big difference. Last week, John McDonnell was in this county giving the message out about how we can do things differently. Differently, first of all by investment, to ensure there is a better electrified railway system across the whole of the southwest, which in turn would help promote jobs and industry across the whole region. And that there is proper